So I'm just about finished with this project and I don't quite have another project lined up yet so it seemed like to me like it would be a good time to clean up the shop because you know like a lot of people I just let the shop go to pot during a project things just get stuffed around it's a good time to clean organize and most importantly it is a good time to vacuum and sweep because the dust gets everywhere of course cleaning's no fun so maybe we should take a second look at this cyclone it's been about a year I think I have a few improvements that I could do and make this thing run a little bit better and I could uh, show you how it's been doing. So, as I said, I've had this about a year and I've only changed a couple of things so far. First of all, I just put this piece of scrap plywood down here as a base, added some casters under it. I put a few angle brackets here to help lock the uh, bucket in place. It's just loose, they're just, they're just holding it in position. For the uh, vacuum itself, I drilled some holes where the wheels can fit in but it was still moving around too much. So I added just a little bit of parachute cord that I'm tying the vac down to the base. Um, some bungee cord might be a good idea, but I didn't have one and I had some paracord. You'll have to believe me, I have not emptied this in the year that I've been using it. Of course, I'm a hobbyist, you know, I'm, I'm not in here eight hours a day vacuuming or whatever. But I'm here, you know, evenings and most weekends and the vacuum will get turned on for anywhere from uh, a couple of minutes to half an hour and yeah I still have the same old um, filter that came with it this was a trash pick vacuum I've been looking for a new filter online the, the, it's discontinued I'm gonna take this off and go to Home Depot and see if I can find something that's similar in size There is virtually nothing in this. There is maybe a tablespoon of dust down in the bottom. That's it. I don't even know if I need another filter if it's going to perform like that. Maybe I should just take the filter off. I still have not done anything permanent to attach this bucket. I'm not sure I want to because I think I'm always going to want to be able to get inside here. But I still, maybe again, put some weather stripping on here and that might help as I clamp it down. So there's the inside, top of the bucket. Certainly a bit dusty and dirty up there. There's the, uh, there's the crevice tool where it blows the air in. Here's the baffle part. Again, a bit of dust up there. No clogs, no problems. Okay, so if I look at the crevice tool here inside the bucket, that is just over two inches by three quarters. So two times three quarters, that's like an inch and a half of area. Now if I look at the intake, two and a quarter area of a circle, pi r squared, so inch and an eighth squared times pi, and I went and looked it up. It's like just under four inches. So you've got four inches of area that I'm constricting here down to like an inch and a half. So yeah, that's a big restriction in airflow. The nice thing about using a hot glue when I built it is I can take it apart now. And so I'm gonna to wanna to redo this with a full diameter opening. So I think replacing this crevice tool as the feed into the cyclone is the most important thing and getting a round pipe to transition to a round bucket is, well that's just too much work so I'm going to use a piece of wood as a transition and that's pretty sure I saw that on Matthias' channel and I'm going to copy his ideas. So I have a piece of wood here and I'm going to Put the bucket on and I'm just kind of eyeballing how I want this to go and I think I'm going to do this. So I'm still going to use the end of this crevice tool as the connector so I want to 
put these two pieces like that and that tells me I want about three and a half inches tall for the sides and I'm going to use some thin plywood for that. Okay, that's the next day and that's dry and that fits on here pretty good. doesn't need to be perfect because that's what caulking is for. So now we need to fill in this hole with something that that can fit in. So, and I'm going to trace around and when I cut it I'm going to stay inside the line because of course this part is extra thick. So. Right, let's put that aside for a few minutes and then a little while later we can just take it all off. And this fits in here really nicely, a little bead of uh, hot glue will just seal that up nice and snug. So now I've got the new transition and I have the old slot that I cut so I'm going to try to fit that over it and I have one of these long nose markers here for reaching inside. and. And that's working pretty good. And I'm going to trace the outside also, just so I have uh, an idea as to the proper positioning when I want to fasten it. And it'll just, in case any of those inside marks didn't take, I can just sort of measure an offset. Like that. I'm going to take a lot of hot glue and just goop it on here. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I've got it all sealed up with uh, hot glue all around, inside and out. I've got the uh, pipe glued in there. And the nice thing about hot glue is if something goes wrong in the future, I should be able to pop it off pretty nicely, but it is a good secure joint. So, next part is where the uh, vacuum hooks up here on the top. When I first built this, I was just, again, I'm still going cheap now, but when I first built this, I cut this off of a piece of a vacuum and I put that in there. When I was looking around to try to improve it this time, I found this piece of PVC that I had. This is a bunch of, this is a piece of two-inch PVC. I bought this three, four years ago when I uh, made my kids an air rocket system. I don't have any video of that, but I'll put a link of that down in the description. That was from a uh, Make Magazine project. It's a lot of fun. Uh, compressed air rockets with a PVC cylinder. Anyways, I had a little piece of that lift up left over and a transition and I think I'm going to cut it about there so it sticks in a little bit and then that will be the transition where the vacuum hooks up on top. So here's the inside of the top of my cyclone bucket all fixed up and hopefully it's going to do some better performance. Now I'm pretty sure that fixing this inlet is going to be the majority of the benefit, but 
for like five bucks I bought a little roll of foam insulation and I'm going to also apply that here to the bucket. took the filter with me to Home Depot and I took it to Lowe's and I looked on Amazon and what I have here is an old craftsman shop vac and it's been discontinued and I cannot find any filters like this you know I found a couple that were like 30 40 bucks US that might have fit if I did a little bit of hacking but you, know, you have to remember that I got this thing off the street. It was a cheap, as in free, shop vac. And I've already done some work on the bearings a couple of times. So I don't really want to spend $40 on it, when if I wait for a sale, I can probably just get a new compact shop vac for like, you know, 70 or something. So as I got to this point, I realized that this is not really a very satisfactory way to end the video because it feels like there's a lot more suction now with the, with the improvements that I've made. Um, I can see the lid of the uh, upper bucket actually sucking down when I close it. It sucked up the dust on the floor really quickly, but I don't really have a way to, uh, you know, I don't have any numbers here. I mean, I, sorry about that, but you get what you paid for. I paid practically nothing. You know, I paid like five bucks. No, I paid like 25 bucks the first time for a new hose set, which I needed anyways. This time I spent like $5 on some weather stripping and I think I have a very much improved shop vac. I don't have a great filter on it, but when I look inside the shop vac itself, there's basically nothing inside the bucket. It's all getting caught by the theme baffle cyclone that I've got. So. I'm happy. Great little shop improvement. Uh, as always, thanks for coming by and spending some time in my shop. I hope you found something interesting and enjoyable. And as always, we'll see you next time. And I think I said as always two or three times in that sentence. This isn't Hollywood. I'm not reshooting.